So what is going on guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, uh, you're gonna hear from me and break down my script of how to sell final expense life insurance over the phone. Uh, what you're gonna be listening to is a live call, you're gonna hear the client on the other end. But ultimately, I wanna share with you how selling final expense, you're gonna learn in this video the one skill, the one character trait that helped me succeed as a life insurance agent that I feel like I mastered, that helped change my life, is building a connection, building rapport, and ultimately building trust. When you can represent your product to the best of your ability when you can build a relationship with the client, and when you can hold yourself accountable to being the best life insurance agent in 2024, and as you're a life insurance agent, you can print money and sell a ton of life insurance. So in this video, you're gonna hear an amazing relationship that I built with this client, and ultimately helped a guy who didn't have life insurance, who was thinking about life insurance, and ultimately, he initially called me and said, hey Peter, I want $100,000. You're gonna hear, I want $100,000 of life insurance, but here's how you set expectations. One of the hardest things when it comes to selling life insurance is people who are looking for life insurance but have unrealistic expectations. And in this call, I'm gonna break down how I narrowed his focus, found his problems, and ultimately offered a solution that will give him the peace of mind. Just to give you a quick hint, this man wants to buy a Mercedes-Benz casket but he wants $100,000. I won't spoil it for you, wait to the end, I wanna share with you ultimately how I sold this guy, put him in the best position, and got a client for life. I hope you guys enjoy, cheers, bye. Wow. Jeez. Uh, I went to Trinidad for some, you know, some months and stuff, and something happened with the payments. One of the agents, she quit, never said anything. Oh, gosh. And I didn't know what was happening with the policy. She was out of Illinois. Uh, I met her out there in Illinois. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she just quit the job, never passed it on. And by the time she passed it on, the policy had left. Get out of here. And the other lady... Well, I didn't really, I didn't, we talked a lot, and we came close to signing up, but I didn't. Why not? And then, well, at that time, I was able to. Oh, okay. And then, the other policy I had for 200 that one was for 200 or 200 Yeah. After, after, like a year and a half, that lapsed. Oh, my God. That was, all, that was my fault, because I fell ill, mm. and I wasn't able to keep the bills paid. Mm, okay. And the grace period she gave me was like 30 days. I just couldn't, I just couldn't catch it. I, you could. Uh, I, yeah. I was overwhelmed, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, I, I can't imagine. Are you doing? That's how, that's how old that went, you know what I mean? That's, that's uh -huh. how old that went. So it seems like you've always had the life insurance and you just want to make sure. I always try to maintain it. I always try to maintain mm. one or two policies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And how, like, I guess what are you most concerned about now that you don't have anything? Like, what are you worried about? I just want to make sure I get buried in my city's Benz casket. Okay. Any money, any money that's over, the, whoever can have it. I don't know which woman I'll be with at that time, but whoever, whatever. Okay. So I just appoint my sister to direct the funds where. Okay, so you want to make sure something happens. That Mercedes Benz casket, how much that costs? Like 15 grand? That's that's never heard of that. We don't know. It's custom made. We don't know. Sheesh. Okay. It's a custom made, it's a custom -made um, casket. That's cool. I mean, not really cool, but I mean, that's interesting. Uh, in regards to. Um, Okay, gotcha. I'm gonna explain how we work here to help you. Uh, what we do is that we specialize, we work with 26 companies here in the States, and we actually have access to these special programs that are only available. So I'm gonna do my best here to find you the, the, the most affordable plan for you and the best rate. Does that sound good? Um, I got you at 53. What's your actual birthday? August. Okay, August. Let me just put that in a second. Okay. Okay. Any heart attacks, strokes, cancers before? No. Okay, with the diabetes, you know, metformin, you taking insulin. The only ailment, uh, the only ailment, thank God, I've ever had is diabetes. Okay, gotcha. Are you managing pretty well? Do you have any complications? No. Okay. Any like neuropathy or any retinopathy? I, no, I don't think so. You know, are you taking gabapentin right now? No, no, no. Okay. Are, are you on insulin or are you on metformin? No, I just take metformin and two insulin. Okay. Yeah, let me put that there. Diabetes. Sometimes like, the doctor stopped me from taking Jardians. Okay, how long were you taking the Jardians? Sometimes like a year. Okay, was it just not doing doing you right? But he said, he said the Jardians does something to something. I'm not sure what he said, but he said, listen, I'm going to pull you off of that Jardians. Yeah. And you're not on... Mm -hmm. Metformin, Trinity, and there's a third one called Glipizide. Glipizide. Oh, that's a pill. Yeah, that's yeah. what I take every day. Okay, but did they ever give you any Lyrica or Gabapentin? That's a big medication I need to know about. Uh, Not a, those treat, um, nerve damage. Nerve 
poverty and they treat depression and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's a bunch of... Oh, okay, good, good, good. You seem like you're doing it right. Good, good, good. And then, um, what age were you diagnosed with your diabetes? You know, I want to sit there and tell you 2005. Okay. 2005. You seem like a trustworthy guy. 2000. Yeah, that's when my grandmother passed. Ah, dang. 2005. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you, it was March 14th. 2005. To March 14th. When I went to Dr. Howard Walker in East Norwalk, Connecticut for my annual physical. I know congestive heart failure, kidney disease, retinopathy. Yeah, never had any of All right, cool. I'll give you a high five. It seems like you're taking care of yourself. In regards to. Nothing else. Okay. Good. Would you look at that? And then, what is your approximate height and weight? Mm. You're going to love these numbers. So, 53. Talk to me. I'm I six one. Okay, six one. Okay, I hate to run into you on a on a dark dark night. You probably take take me out. I'm a I'm a young I'm a young bull. I'm I'm like one fifteen wet. I'd have to run from you. Oh, I can tell you got a great heart, don't you? That's awesome. Okay, six. Oh, I can tell. Uh, beautiful. And then uh, any um any other any other like hospitalizations anything like that? No, I'm good, man. I'm good. Cool. He's been good to you. Amen. Amen. Love that. Uh, before I jump in this, I do want to give you um, give you my information. I don't know if you're able to write it down, but it's really important. I mean, you had experiences where your life insurance agents, they ran on you. I've been doing this for... How old are you, sir? Me? Are you, sir? 25. Okay, you're 25, right? Yeah. I will bet you the entire content of my policy directed to you that in two years, you're not going to be selling a life insurance. Who is you are? Two years, you're not going to be selling life insurance. I've been doing it for two years. Going to my third. So two more years, guess what? You're not going to be doing it. Why are you, why are you, why are you betting down on me? I'm here to help you. <laughs> Come on. Listen, listen, my guy. I have had three or four agents. Yeah. Quick, even the last girl. She was so sweet. Her name, I forget her name. But she was working at MetLife or New York Life. Oh, that's why. For several years, and she said, "Listen, I'm not changing careers." Da, 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 da. But she promised, you know, if she do, yeah, I, she, I, she's gonna contact me and send me, give my information to another agent, which she did. His name is, uh, but she moved on. Dang. She moved on. Well, I don't know if you can. This economy is kind of hard to keep it going. You know? Yeah. Uh, if you give me the opportunity, let's, if, I, if I'm able to even help you, I'll send you a Christmas card of me selling life insurance every day until I die. I'll be that guy. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, and then in regards to, yeah, my name is Peter Robert. This is actually my personal cell phone number. Um, so this is the number you can call me on. You can save this in your phone. And then I do have to give you my license number. It's 195041. My boss makes me say that. Yeah, I'll shoot you a text. Yeah, text is fine. Okay, I'll shoot you a text. Peter Roberts and then 1950. Okay, talk to me here, Miss Marlon. I'm here to help you. What? If you use, let me tell you the truth. If you use this number or a certain number, all the numbers come up as spam. They said spam likely, so I don't answer that. Yeah. As a rule of thumb. But this number showed your name, so I told you somebody like no. Yeah. Peter Roberts, that's why I took the call. Yeah, Peter Roberts, Peter Cottontail, that's me. This is my personal cell number. Yeah, but all the other numbers you call me from, they come up and says spam likely, so I never answer them. Really? Okay. Yeah. No worries, that's... There's an iPhone 14 that's very sensitive and proactive to watch spam calls. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I love that. I mean, you don't want to be speaking to people who are strangers, but that's why I sent you my, my license number. Um, so that you have all my information, you can look me up with the state, it'll show you that I'm licensed, been through all those background checks, all that fun stuff, okay? Uh -huh. I can even send you my driver's license if you need it, okay? That's fine, sir. We don't even need all of that. Okay. I just need to know, five, six, seven years from now, you're going to be the guy. And if you have to switch careers, I, I applaud you, no problem. Just make sure you pass my info on to another agent. Yeah, I, I ain't going anywhere. I got a... I, got a I don't lose contact and all that. 
Yeah, I appreciate that. And that's why you're, I mean, I'm going to do my best. And ultimately, my goal is to be a man of my word with anything I do. So I, you know, I want to tell you that I ain't going anywhere. And um, our goal is to actually help this industry. The reason that I'm actually like a manager here at this company, our company is to change the industry. A lot of people leave because they, it's not fruitful for them. So we're here to help you. But apart from that, a part of me, I want to learn about you. What had you looking around for life insurance? What's the goal? I think it's a responsibility to have three kids. I have, you know, mm -hmm. I have women and myself in my life. I want to make sure that they could, you know, bury me properly and have a little money to, you know, take a vacation or something. Okay. Okay, so bury you properly, make sure you get the three kids taken care of, and then the vacation. Okay, gotcha. And <clears throat> I guess if something were to happen, who, who would be responsible for, like, the burial and stuff? Was that your, like, who would who would that be right now that would be responsible? Well, since if that happens today, uh -huh. that person would be my sister. Okay, so your sister would be the one? Yeah. Okay. And is she in, like, a position where she could come out of pocket, you know, ten, probably twenty to 25000 for your your Mercedes <laughs> casket? No, she she's not gonna do twenty five thousand on my bedroom. Okay. So you wouldn't have to you wouldn't be able to get the Mercedes Benz casket? Yeah, I wanna make sure she has the funds from my insurance so she could do this, you know. Okay. So you want to you wanna have the top of the line type of service so that you have the funds available to get the barrel that you deserve, correct? Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Um and then in regards to any other expenses or any bills that you're worried about leaving behind to her? No, I don't, I don't give up. I don't care about the bills once I die. Yeah. I, I rather no one has the burden of funding my burial expenses. Mm. So I really want to have something in place to cover those things. You know okay, I mean? yeah. So simple. One of your biggest concerns is making sure those burials so that you can go to bed at night as a man knowing that your sister, you know, your kids will never have to pay for your funeral uh, arrangements, right? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I want to pay for my own departure. Okay, gotcha. My that's, own internment. Yeah, makes sense. And as a man, you just want to make sure that's all in your hands. And then in regards to, um, you know, your journey, have you been looking around for a while now for some life insurance or, or not really? No, no. Well, listen, man, I'm a school insurance, mm -hmm. but that's why I say, oh, look, let me make sure I get back some insurance. That's what I'm calling. Okay, That's yeah. I gotcha. That makes sense. So as long as it doesn't have a two-year waiting period, you're looking for it. Okay, gotcha. And, um, okay, this is looking good here for you. And just walk me through what you're looking for because there's two types of insurance. Are you looking for something like, or the, this is what we typically have with, especially with the burial expense. It's, it's typically called the, the whole life insurance, you know, something where that cost will never go up. The coverage amount will never go down, and it's something that will never expire on you, and it's going to be there for you your whole entire life, so that you can go to bed at night knowing that your sister and your family will always be taken care of. Is that what you're looking for? Precisely. Okay. What did I miss there? That you said precisely. Walk me through what what I missed there. No, you said you asked me what I'm looking for, and you said. That when I pass on, my sister can have the funding to give me the type of bill that I want. Yeah. And I said precisely that's what I want. Oh, beautiful. Okay, gotcha. Well, I plugged in all your information here, and it does show that you are eligible uh, for the best option statewide out of all the 26 companies here in the state. <clears throat> uh, $20,000 coverage, if you can get approved, would be $66.56 per month. Okay. Now the next option is a little bit more, it's the most common if you want a more elaborate funeral, it's called the $25,000 option. The $25,000 option, what that would do, cover all the burial expenses start to finish and even leave a few thousand dollars, I'm thinking it'd be five to $6,000 behind um, if that was important to you, to the kids. That $25,000 would be $82.15 per month, okay? Last option for you. What's the last option? Uh, the max option is the $35,000 option, okay? $35,000, you know, pretty straightforward. Cover the burial expenses and leave um, a good, I'd say at least $15,000 or so, even more left over to the family. Um, and, the, and the coverage kicks in immediately. Uh, that $35,000 be one thirteen thirty four per month. Okay. So. That's a good option. Okay, that... But here's a question, a quick question. Please. My mother, my mom, she is 84. Okay. And she's a diabetic. God bless her heart. Wow. Uh, you have anything you can do to cover her? 
Um, we typically have a solution for everyone. Let me see here. Let me this see. is 84 for crying out loud. I mean, we might, but it might be, I don't know if it's worth, I mean, you gotta make sure it fits the budget. Like, 84, let's see here. So she was born in 30, 39. Okay. 38, 39, yeah. I do have an option for her. You have the same 20,000 minimum option? Uh, yeah, there's there's a company called Royal Neighbors of America that would give her twenty thousand. And what that pays out to be every month? Does she have neuropathy or complications? No, she is 100% no. She, is she perfectly healthy. Otherwise, the diabetes. Okay. Yeah, it would be. You now this is gonna be a little high for for twenty thousand. You're looking at, you know, I don't know if I'd recommend it. It's gonna be like three hundred bucks a month. Yeah. We had one that we started for twenty thousand or fifteen thousand. So either twenty or fifteen thousand. And um we were paying it we were paying it together, my brother and my sister and myself. Yeah. And I don't know what the freak happened in the last month or so. Like there was a miscommunication with who said what and what said, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a bunch and of look at that, look at this. My yeah. Said, hey, the car, it's no more. We decided not to have it anymore. I don't know what happened. Okay. So maybe that's something we can do for her, you know? Okay. Well, I want to be here for you and to make sure your whole family's taken care of. Uh, the big thing, you know, I know we can do is we can help you out and then we can look at some options for your mom. Does that, does that work well for you? Yeah, we can probably do that. Okay. So walk me through, I mean, just for you, um, so Marlon, were you thinking like what's better for you, the twenty thousand or the thirty thousand? What, what, what option makes most sense for you? Uh, you said the thirty thousand was a was a buck thirteen or buck fifteen. Yeah, buck thirteen for the thirty-five thousand. That that would be the one that I would like to go for. Okay. What about that one? Do you think why is that best for you? Because my father taught me a lesson. Okay. He said all or nothing at all. All or nothing at all. Go big or go home. Uh, he was a good man. That guy was a millionaire. Oh my god. Really? He had a good time. Yeah, he had a great time in his life. Oh my gosh, he was. A... And he passed on when he turned sixty-eight. Wow, youngin, man. Yeah. And Mr. Mr. Mullen, that that thirty thirty-five thousand for that one thirteen thirty-five thirty-four per month is that going to be comfortable and affordable for you every month? I just want to make sure it fits the budget. Okay, cool. You're important to me. I, I don't want to get you something that you can't keep because I know. It, Basically, what I can do is I can just plug that into my monthly uh, thing and let it come out of that, and I don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we also have a customer service team. I don't know if you have this in the past, but if you were to happen to miss a payment or need to move a payment, we can actually arrange that. We have a customer service team that can help you with that too. Okay. Yeah. So. What we can do for you here, Mr. Marlin, is I, I gotta first see if they can get you approved, and if they do get you approved, we can kind of name your beneficiaries and then set up the time that you you know want that first payment to come out. Does that all work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And in regards to, I forgot to ask you, no COVID in the last thirty days. No what? Any COVID nineteen in the last thirty days? Man, that was in twenty twenty. I never had even a cold since twenty twenty. Okay. I love your accent. Where are you from? I was born in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Oh, Trinidad and the Tobago? Yes, sir. It's a Trinidad and Republic in the Caribbean. Oh, what, what, uh, is your family, do you have any family there? I have brothers, I have a brother down there, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. What brought you to the States? I feel like it's so much more beautiful there. Came here 30 years ago, man, and I got uh, caught up with wife and kids and all that stuff. Oh, would you look at that. So I've been here ever since. Wow. You ever plan on going back? I go back all the time. Oh, would you look at that? That's right now, right now I'm thinking to go back for good. Really? Get out of here? Sure. Who the fuck are you going to get to now? Who are you going to vote for Trump or Biden? And why? They both wear diapers. Oh my God. They're both crazy. I mean, they both got their own issues. Would you look at that? 300 million people in America. That's all we can come up with? No. Uh, come on. You're telling me. Hey, what, hey, when you go, when you go to, when you, when you go, what is it, Trinidad to, to, I don't know.
All right, guys, so I wanna share with you how the final sale finished off. This was an interesting one. So I was able to take him into the application, put his beneficiaries information on there and got him uh, approved. And the last step was putting on the banking information. This guy was super hectic. He was running around. And one of the lessons that I teach my team is that time kills deals. And after building so much rapport and speaking to this guy and talking about his family life and when he's going back, out of country, and it's been a great relationship. Uh, he actually, on the banking, said that he needed to go. He was like, hey man, I got a lot of people out. I'm actually gonna get my car detailed. Can you call me back in 20 minutes? He's like, my phone's about to try about the I was like, go ahead and charge it. Go plug it in. Go plug in. Just trying to push that sale. And I, and he was like, just dude, promise me, I'll call you. I'll call you back in 20 minutes. So I called him back in 20 minutes. He didn't answer. So what I did is I actually sent this guy a, uh, a message. Um, I sent him a picture of a Mercedes Benz. I said, I always wanted to get an AMG. GTR and just to re-engage him he didn't answer me I called him twice and he didn't answer that text message but five minutes later he called me up he says hey I love that picture I'm a big Mercedes-Benz guys let's go ahead and get this taken care of and I did solidify that sale and get him approved and ultimately uh, make sure that I got the banking the routing and account number and lock down that sale so just creative ways that you can when people are running or have to go like you don't make the sale until you have the banking information so that's what i did there it was kind of hectic i know the camera cut out a few times but i hope you guys learned a lot about how i build rapport how i focus on building this relationship and ultimately when i get someone on the phone and i can build this connection i'm always thinking how can i be the guy how can i be the girl uh, that is going to serve this person that's going to take care of this person and to serve this person and ultimately he made a bet that i'll never forget he said every single life insurance agent that i spoke to always says they're going to be here for life, but I, I guarantee you, I will bet money you won't be here in two years. And I think that's going to be a joke on him. I'm going to send him a Christmas card every single Christmas just to say, hey, Mr. Marlin, I am still your guy. Uh, you are loved. And ultimately, um, I want to make, I made that commitment to be that guy for you. And I'm a man of my word. And you know, welcome to the family and thanks for being a part of the family. So that's kind of how I operate. And ultimately, this is kind of how I've learned how to sell final expense. And ultimately something when you can learn to master selling over the phone, you can sit in your living room, you can sit in your office and you can call people, sell them a product and, you know, change your family's life. So I love you guys. I hope this video brought you a ton of value. If you want more live sales calls like this, just comment below. I look at them and I ultimately want to provide you as much value as possible so I can help you guys get to where you want to be and ultimately make more money, impact your life and ultimately change your family's life as well. So see you in the next one. Take care. Cheers.